This is not good, baby. Mm -mm. I'm very worried. Don't cry, baby. Chris's health problems have all come to a head and Jamie is quickly realising exactly what it means to be a partner to someone with a number of chronic illnesses. I'm worried, I don't know what happened. Lucia is so bad. No sé qué tengo que hacer. Jamie is already a little overwhelmed with all the new information she's discovered about Chris since Chris arrived in Colombia. From her mint allergy to her chronic neck pain, the need for a $100,000 surgery, it's all come as a shock and she's unsure how she feels about it all. I think I have a lot of things to process. It's an operation that probably will take a year and we don't know how to meet her. Oh, but Jamie, if you think you've heard it all, well, you haven't. Because in this episode, Chris has another bombshell to confess. But we'll get to that shortly. So when we join Chris and Jamie in this episode, the pair are out furniture shopping. The aim is to both fill and decorate their empty apartment. Being here with Jamie makes me feel like home, but our apartment definitely needs some help. It becomes immediately obvious that the pair have very, very different tastes when it comes to interior decor. Jamie likes a modern, minimalist look. Sleek, classy, lots of white. But Chris is on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. She prefers maximalism. She likes lots of different colours, patterns, different objects. It's very decorative, but the problem is these two styles don't mesh well together. And it will be very interesting to see how they come to a compromise, because this is both of their homes. It needs to be a place where both feel like themselves, like they can be comfortable there. Chris and I have different styles, very different. Look at this. I'm not a big fan of the couch, are you? I like it. Now, while the pair are in the middle of shopping, Chris reveals that she has yet another thing that she wants to get off her chest. Jamie's face is screaming, oh no, what is it gonna be this time? <laughs> the truth is, we can already see that Jamie is struggling with all of the baggage Chris has brought with her. So what else has Chris been keeping secret? I was searched papers to go to court in order to prosecute the man who stole my rare motorcycle. Wow, that was not what I was expecting. Is it random? Yes, but is it bad? Well, in the grand scheme of things, probably not. At least it's not another health issue, right? But the problem is, Chris goes on to explain that she may need to leave Bogota in order to go back to Alabama and deal with court proceedings. Now, this news catches Jamie off guard. Keep in mind, Chris has only been in Bogota for three days. They've only just met in person, but now Chris will have to leave again. But that's not all. The news is about to get a whole lot worse. In one week, I may have to fly back the 19th and come back on the 21st. That means we would have to change our wedding date. Oh boy. Having to change your wedding date is a big deal. Remember, these two were planning to get married in less than a week. They were rushing to book the very first available date the venue had. But this news almost feels like the universe is telling them to hit the brakes a little. But here's the thing, something about this doesn't quite seem right. Like if her bike was stolen, why is she the one being served? And surely these court dates are organised months in advance. Why is she only finding out like a week prior? And it might just be Chris recapping what happened for the sake of the camera crew. But why does it feel like this is the first time Chris has mentioned the incident to Jamie? A man broke into my garage and stole my rare motorcycle that my dad had given me right before he passed away. I can't not put this man in jail. Hopefully, I won't have to go back. I don't know yet. I'll know Monday. Okay. Now, Chris reveals that she was planning on selling this rare bike. 
this was a bike that had been handed down by her dad. And Chris's plan was to use the funds from the sale in order to part fund her future with Jamie. And while the sums involved are quite large, it's a lot of money we're talking about here. What's noticeable is Chris seems more concerned about losing the money than the sentimental bike. They told me I didn't have to go to court. And as much as I don't like it, I mean, that's $50,000 that I lost from that. Jamie can't believe the conversation she's having. She seems devastated at the fact that Chris has to leave her so quickly, and she's understandably upset that they might have to postpone their wedding. But what she seems most hurt by is that history seems to be repeating itself. Everything repeat again for my birthday. Chris was supposed to come see me for my birthday, but she got cold feet and then a cup. You might remember that Chris proceeded to ghost Jamie for over a month without speaking to her. No communication at all. And Jamie naturally assumed that their relationship was over. I mean, you would, right? A month is a long time without so much as a single message. But it was at this point, as you may recall, that Jamie started chatting to another woman from Texas. Jamie felt alone. She felt abandoned by Chris. And now, here we are, with the pair supposed to be getting married in a few days. And Chris is leaving again while having to appear in court is a pretty good excuse. You can't blame Jamie for thinking, maybe Chris is having cold feet. Maybe she's abandoning her again. And her right now. And so her. Son muchos, es muchos sentimientos lo que siento en este momento. Eso me genera preocupación, tristeza, desespero. Chris tries to reassure Jamie that that's not the case. In fact, she makes it clear that Jamie wasn't the only victim. She was also hurt by it all. Why? Well, when they did eventually get back together, Jamie continued speaking to this other lady behind Chris's back. It was only when the Texan lady messaged Chris to ask her if she knew Jamie that Jamie's cheating came to light. But you hurt me too. Yes. By breaking my trust. I know. So, both Chris and Jamie have made mistakes in the past, but that still doesn't answer the question. Why did Chris ghost Jamie in the first place? And is this really history repeating itself? I understand why Jamie started talking to this other woman. I hurt her by ghosting her, so she hurt me. I became overwhelmed with her neediness and I ghosted her. You can't think honestly that I'm going to go back to Alabama and not come back here. To be fair to Chris, from what we've seen on the show at least, she seems like she is committed to this relationship. After all, she sold her house, she's left her children, left her mum, flown to Colombia, and she's the one supporting them financially. In my eyes, she's done more than enough to prove that she's committed. But there are still some question marks about this all. In particular, all the information Chris seems to have hidden from Jamie. Not to mention the fact that the ghostings have happened more than once. Chris seems very unpredictable. Ella no es una persona predecible. Que ella me diga en este momento que se necesita ir, siento que no va a regresar. But for now at least, given that they still don't know for sure that Chris definitely has to go to Alabama, they decide that there's no point worrying about this until they find out one way or the other. So, a new day, a new lease on life, right? Well, not exactly. You see, when we join them the next morning, Chris is in a really bad way. Her neck pain is really flaring up. How are you feeling? I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> we got a lot to do today, but... I feel I'm going to be limited in what yeah, I can do I today. Chris's neck pain comes from a broken neck that she had from a car accident in the past. Now, anyone who suffers from any form of chronic neck pain or back pain knows just what a nightmare that is to live through. But out of the four days that Chris has been in Colombia, the pain has taken her out of commission for two of them. At a 50% hit rate, it's obviously a huge part of her life that affects the quality of her life. And it's surprising that she didn't mention this to Jamie until she moved to Bogota. 
That's come as a huge surprise to Jamie. She just wasn't ready for this. She didn't know that she should expect it. Uh, it's normal, your pain is. I don't know if it's normal, if it's because of the altitude difference or if it's just from the plane right here. I don't know. I just have severe, severe pain. Chris's pain has been increasing ever since she got to Colombia. Now, there's no doubt that a combination of the long flight, the stress of moving, the new environment, I'm sure all of that plays a role. But is she also, perhaps, feeling the pressure of trying to keep up with her younger fiancé? Has she pushed herself too hard to keep up with Jamie in a bid to seem more active, more youthful? After all, the last thing that she'd want to do after meeting Jamie for the very first time is to become bedridden. What impression would that leave? Especially given that Jamie is already curious just how much Chris can handle. With all the physical ailments I've been dealing with, I am really worried that I'm pushing Jamie away. So I am definitely pushing myself more than I should be. So the pair are planning a nice relaxed morning. They're heading over to a flea market, but in the cab on the way there, it becomes very clear that something's not right. Chris is lying down on the back seat of the cab, her head cradled in Jamie's lap, and she begins to cry. Right now, Jamie's getting a really good look at how bad some of Chris's health issues really are. She's worried, she's scared, and I'd hazard to guess, she's probably thinking, is this really something I signed up for? And the flea market right now, are you feeling? I don't think I can get out to even look at the flea market right now. What happened? I'm in too much pain. All plans to visit the flea market are abandoned. The pair do a U-turn, and when back home, they call a doctor. At this point, Jamie's completely overwhelmed. She's obviously never had to deal with someone in this much pain before. What was supposed to be a fun, entertaining morning has turned into something else entirely. Something she feels unequipped to handle. Now, of course, it's entirely normal and expected to care for the one you love when they're sick. But if this is something that Chris goes through on a regular basis, then Jamie's going to start feeling more like a full-time care than a partner. Lufia is so bad. She feels bad. <sighs> so when the doctor arrives and assesses Chris, his diagnosis is there's only a handful of options here. Sure, he can give her a short-term fix, but that's only putting a band-aid over a much larger problem. This is something that's going to keep on happening over and over again. It's not magically going to vanish. Ella no se opera un dolor cervical, pues se va a volver un dolor crónico constante. O sea, solo tenemos dos opciones: o se opera según el médico tratante, o sencillamente va a tener que convivir con el dolor. For now, at least, the doctor is able to give Chris something to help ease the pain. He gives her an injection, and he also prescribes some pain medication. But note how he recommends she goes back to her doctor. And considering that Chris may already have to fly back to Alabama for the court case, this leaves Jamie very concerned. I have a lot of preocupation about the fact that he can go to Alabama for the juicio. Pero si sigue así, con ese dolor, yo creo que va a tener que irse a Alabama, pero es a operar. If, while back in America, indeed, if at any point Chris decides to have the surgery that she's told us is inevitable, what would that mean for her and Jamie's relationship? It's a lot to take in, especially as only two days ago, Jamie had no idea this was even a problem. Entonces, yo no sé... ¿Qué significa eso para, para nosotras como, como pareja en nuestra relación? 